Those who care, dressing room 18, Whitehead speaking. Uh, no. No, I'm sorry, he's not uh, here, he's on stage tape. All right, all right, I'll have him call you as soon as he gets here. I think he's here. That's all right, Dick, that's for you. Who is it? It's your agent. Oh, hi, George. Who is this? Oh, hello, Tony. Tony, I wish you wouldn't tell people you're my agent. You don't represent me anymore. You used to represent me. You remember when I was out of work and starving to death? Yeah, I wish I was back with your agency just so I could quit again. What do you want? Well, no, I haven't got a check from him. Well, you can rest assured. If I get the check, I'll send you the 10%, which I can send you 10% of the humiliation and embarrassment you caused me. What? When? What? In three minutes? Well, why didn't you give me some warning, Tony? I could have put on a false mustache so I could go home tonight. <laughs> My channel's are on. Well, I'll watch it, all right. I just hope nobody else does. Yeah, goodbye. Hey, Tony, I'm not your sweetie, I'm not your baby, and I'm not your booby. I'm your former sweetie baby boo. <laughs> Mail call! Ha, ha, ha. These are for you, Dick. Your popularity is increasing. Yeah, sure. Dennis, this is for you. It's an invitation to my high school reunion. Yeah, Dennis, listen. You know how much I hated high school? In my yearbook, I was voted the one most likely to remain short. <laughs> Look at this. It's addressed to Dr. Brad Fairmont. Uh, Dick, would you mind if I read this? Uh, I like to get a sampling of the pulse of the people, you know, so to keep my ear to the ground. What he's saying is he likes to read other people's mail. No, but it's the producer's primary responsibility to know what the viewers think of our show. That's right. Well, you go read it, Max. These letters are very important. We learn a lot from these. Don't oh, forget, it was one of our viewers that pointed out that you don't get asthma from another person. One of our viewers? He was from the AMA. <laughs> you, you, you know something? If I don't get something to eat before that next scene, I'm going to starve to death. Would you go down to the machine, Dennis, and get me one of those nice apples? Oh, yeah, just sure. Sunday. Max, we could, maybe you could rust me up on those good egg salad sandwiches. Yeah, a sure. Cup of coffee, maybe. I could sort of go for one oh, myself. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll buy. <laughs> and Miss Minnie Bellows, our big winner with $209.48 chickens, will return to Wheel of Steel <laughs> after this message. Was that you? How would you listen? What happened to the sanctity of a men's dressing room anyway? That was him. Yeah, it was me. Dick, why would you do an awful thing like that? I don't know. I don't know. Why did Marlon Brando do Countess from Hong Kong? Yeah, why did I write yesterday's episode? I hope you're not comparing yourself to Marlon Brando. I'm not. He is. Dick, I, I know that you're allowed to do outside things, but this is too far out. I want an explanation of why my star is being seen in such an abomination as that. Well. I might as well explain it to you. You saw most of it anyway. This is going to be good. Yeah. Well, you know uh, my next door neighbor. Yes, Richard Richardson. Yeah. Well, at this time, I'd just come to Los Angeles from Phoenix. I didn't know a soul in the town. I was desperate for some work. But why would he let you do an awful thing like that? Well, you see, he was going to go down to San Diego and do uh, The Music Man during the hiatus of his show. And then all of a sudden, he couldn't do it. And he asked you to take his play. Right. You're kidding. That's just what I said. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. I want you to do it as a personal favor to me. Richard, those kind of favors people can't pay back. Well, have another bagel. Well, thank you. <laughs> have a script. No kidding. You're really serious about that? You mean with a cane and a straw hat and a plaid suit and everything? Uh-huh. I don't think I can handle it. Well, I'll give it to someone else. I can handle it. <laughs> you think they really want me? Well, sure they do. An experienced actor is not easy to find who'll work for that money. It's not very substantial. Well, you were going to do it. I'm in a television series for three years, right? I make a point of doing something with class at least once a year. The money's not important. You know, how much is it? Ain't fine on me. <laughs> Did you say $85 a week? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, that's very unimportant. It's for three weeks. And a lot of important people come down from L.A. to see the shows. Yeah, you coming down? That's well, such a long drive. <laughs> that was definitely not the music man. I know. Then what was it? I'm getting to that. Boy, I wish you would have done the music, man. What a great show that was. Mm. I was there back in 52. I was co-producing Mr. Caterpillar's Treehouse, and I was going with that June Taylor dancer, mm. and I took her to Taffinetti's. Mm. Do you remember Taffinetti's on 44th Street of Broadway? They had those big, big Idaho potatoes in the window. <laughs> they were scrumptious. <laughs> and then, after the dinner, we went to the music, man. What an evening. And after the show, we walked to Broadway, and, and then I bought her one of those big balloons, and then we just walked up and down Broadway singing all the songs. I'll never forget, it was at 57th Street and Madison. I was just about to pop a question, and these two guys come from out of the doorway, and they mugged us. <laughs> they took everything we had. 
including her big balloon. Wait, wait, wait. You mean you were mugged in 1952? Oh, yes. And they weren't mugging many people then. <laughs> we were one of the first. <laughs> you were one of the first to see Music Man, too, Max. They weren't doing it in 1952. Oh, you're right. We were mugged at South Pacific. <laughs> Music Man was when they stole the transmission out of my car. <laughs> You think that was something? I was walking out 47. Please, seconds. Dennis, don't interrupt the man in the middle of the story. That's terrible. Sorry. Dick, you're not going to get off the hook that easy. Now, why did you ever do a terrible thing like that? Well, everything was great until the doorbell rang. Hi, Dick. Hi. Uh, aren't you going to invite me in? I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> Tony. Tony who? Tony Injijikian, your agent. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, good, yeah. We never really met, did we? Well, we met on the phone about a dozen times. Yeah. You know, you look a lot younger than you do on the phone. Well, I'm a lot older than I look. How old are you? 24 and a half, five foot six. <laughs> I sound taller on the phone, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, since when do theatrical agents make house calls? Whenever they smell money. Nice pad you got here, Dickie. Very, very nice pad. Thank you. But I'm going to help you do a lot better. Oh? Yeah, that's why I came over. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> an offer for your services. In fact, it's so attractive that I wanted to come over here personally just so I could enjoy your reaction. Well, you know, I don't know if I got a reaction left. I just got a job. I did a great reaction in here. You should have been here. Here's what I got a reaction to. The music man? Three weeks in San Diego. Who contacted you for the job, Dick? Was it someone from our office? Was that George Zimmerman? It was Richard Richardson. The actor from the television series Harrigan's Hooligans. That's right. Oh, yeah. He had a conflict, and so I'm going to do it for him. Oh, I say music man, huh? Well, it's not bad. How much? Eighty-five dollars a week. <laughs> Dicky, I know, all right. Dickie. But it's better than ten percent of nothing. Dicky, I would like you to promise me that you will never do this to me again. Well, what did I do? You got a job on your own. I thought you would love that. I mean, you get the commission anyway. Dick, I cannot be effective if you go running off taking nothing jobs. Now, can I? Tony, so all I know is that for some reason, through no fault of my own, I'm available for the next three weeks. Now I got a chance to do a great musical and kind of stretch myself artistically. Well, by stretching yourself artistically, you just may be blowing a chance to stretch yourself financially. What, you're talking about the offer you just mentioned? Precisely. What is it? A movie? Better. More money, more people will see you. What is it? What are you looking for? A cigar. <laughs> Here. Thank you. What is it? First, have a cigar. Thank you. What is it? Well, I have been showing the tapes of your talk show all over town, and I finally got a bite, a very big bite. Ben. Phil McCormick over at Snyder, Randolph, and Bassey. You mean I wanted it for a commercial? Not just a commercial, Dickie. They would like you to be their new Mr. Dazzle. Mr. Dazzle? Mm-hmm. The toilet bowl cleaner? <laughs> The uh, flush tank freshener, Dick. <laughs> oh, Tony, you've got to be kidding me. No, no. They got rid of the old Mr. Dazzle. They flushed him right off the air. <laughs> you mean I've got to wear that stupid outfit now? No, 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 no. Home to approach. They want a Mr. Dazzle who can sing and who can dance, and that's you. That's me. You're perfect. You know who else they were considering for this role? Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor. Right, they couldn't get him to touch it, huh? Which is a break for you. <laughs> this commercial is going to be very classy, going to be in the style of the 30s. Top hat, white tie and tails, dancing girls, the whole crazy, exciting era. Everybody loves nostalgia. Tony, nobody's nostalgic about their toilet. <laughs> Dickie, if this commercial catches on, it's going to be worth thousands, and I'm being conservative. Look, Dick, the music man is going to be around forever. Mr. Dazzle will not. I think that's fair. Have I ever steered you wrong? Tony, you've never steered me. <laughs> well, will you give me a chance to steer you? Dick, I'm trying to make you rich. Don't frustrate me. Well, <clears throat> the only thing is my uh, neighbor. Oh, oh, I, I Richardson guess. is going to understand he's an actor, right? Yeah. Why did he bow out? Got a better offer. Right. So now you get a better offer, that's the way it works, right? <laughs> All right. Well, listen, how long have you got before you have to firm it up? I'd love to talk this over with my wife once. Oh, sure, sure. I never met your wife, but I'm sure she's a sensible woman. She's got great taste, and I'm sure she's going to agree with me. But if she doesn't? I want you to promise me something. You will not make a final decision until I get a shot at her. All right? Wives can be wrong, you know. Mine was. Wait. You're 24 and a half married and divorced? Yeah. I don't linger over mistakes. I like to move fast, you know? <laughs> I won't let you. So we turn down the 85 bucks. Well, I'll talk to you later. OK, I got to know by tomorrow. Yeah, you will. All right, trust me, Dick, and I'll get you out of San Diego. And into a toilet. <laughs> Age is 24 and a half, he drives a motorcycle. Hi, Manny. Hi. Did the drugstore get here with our stuff? Not yet. Oh? 
Who was that delivery boy on the motorcycle? That was no delivery boy. That was my agent. <laughs> Tony, uh, what's his name? Indigitian. My gosh, he's so young. Honey, he may be young, but he's very obnoxious. <laughs> what was he doing here? Well, he made me an offer that I don't think I can refuse. I mean, trouble is, I'd have to give up the music man to do it. Well, is it as good as the music man? No. I get to sing and dance. Yeah? In a theater? No. <laughs> On television? No. In a movie? In a toilet. <laughs> Dick, you're not going to go back and do nightclub work again, are you? This is a real toilet. You mean that that Tony, Armenian... Indijikian. Uh, he did whatever his name is, wants you to sing and dance and... Oh, he wants you to do a commercial? Yeah. They would like for me to be the new Mr. Dazzle. Mr. Dazzle, the toilet bowl cleaner? Freshener. Did you have to wear that uh, white rubber wet suit and the, and the white slim fins? <laughs> no, no, it's a new campaign. Scuba stuff is out now. It's a nice white tie and tail. You wouldn't have to swim around in the tank? No, I, I think I get to dance on, on top of it. What do you think? What do I think? What do you think? Well, I, I know what I think. I just wondered what you think. I know what I think. You don't think you ought to do it, do you? That's what I think. A lot of money involved in it, honey. Honey, you were just so excited about doing the music, man. I mean, I don't think money should be a consideration. Even, even if we could buy a 10-pound rib roast and put our kids through college? Even if we could buy a 20-pound rib roast and put all our kids through... Put all our kids through college? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a lot of money. Would you like to rethink what you think and what you think I think? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yes, I thought. <laughs> You decided to do the commercial, huh? How do you know? I heard you tap dancing on the toilet seat. <laughs> You're going to be embarrassed when your friends start talking about it? Oh, our friends won't talk about it. Not our good friends. Yeah, they left. <laughs> you know, on the other hand, it is an original commercial. You know they're going to show a whole toilet? <laughs> Honey, they've done that. They did it with Mr. Dazzle scuba diving and that little tiny man in the tiny rowboat floating around. Honey, that was just a flush tank. This time they're going to show the whole thing. <laughs> It's gonna be a real breakthrough, really. It'll be a real breakthrough, all right. Full frontal toilet. Well, I'll get to do Music Man one of these days, right? Right. I figure the least I can do for my kids, college education, a commercial. Uh, Tony? Hi, this is Dick. Look, I'm sorry to call you at home, but I've, I finally got some good news. I've decided... Well, yeah, how'd you know? No, I just this second made... Tony, you know, that was a mistake. You shouldn't have done that. I might have decided to do that musical. And you... Well, no, I didn't, but I could have. All right, just tell me where and when. Well, I, you saw the tapes. You know, tell them I'm no Fred Astaire, but I can fake it. Yeah. Look, how about my friend Richard and, and his... Uh, rep yeah, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was that all about? You know what that little square did? Without even checking with me, he went ahead and he firmed up that contract and he got me a replacement, he apologized to Rich. He even got Connie a job dancing on the commercial. Boy, were the things people will do just to make up for being short. <laughs> good. I guess I'm gonna have to learn his last name, huh? You know, they're gonna rehearse for three whole days. I bet they got some real tough dance steps planned. Oh, honey, you'll be able to do it. Well, I sure wish I hadn't stopped jogging. <laughs> yeah, just think you could be in Montreal by now. <laughs> Dick, you're not going to start jogging. No, I'm just not going to be able to sleep unless I know I can still do an old leg change. Let's see. Look at that. <laughs> I can still do it, honey. Look at that. <laughs> honey, what oh, happened? Oh, that knee. My knee buckled on me. <laughs> Dick, you know you can't dance without warming up. I know it. I know it. Oh. Is it bad? Oh, well, you know my knee kind of has a life of its own. <laughs> You know something? I could have just blown that whole television commercial. 
You think your knee's trying to tell you something? Yeah, maybe my knee has better taste than I do. <laughs> Oh, Hi, Connie. Hi. Hey, listen, don't worry. Everything's gonna be perfect. How's your knee? Well, so far so good. I haven't heard from it in about three days now. Good. If okay. you don't look cute in that outfit. <laughs> Thanks. Listen, good luck. Thank you. See you in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Slater. What do you know, Miss? And, and, are you set, Dick? Okay, oh, everyone, pay attention. And nice and bright, and... All right, Mr. Dazzle, commercial, take one. And... Action! Jeez. You all right, he's fine, he's fine. He's just clowning around a little to keep loose, right? All right, let's keep it together. All right, no, 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 I can do it. It's okay. Oh, boy. I guess they'll probably notice that, won't they? Dick, it's just not going to work this way. Hey, 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 Mitch, it's got to work. He blew a chance to do the music man for this. Okay, we'll try one more shot at it, but if it doesn't work this time, we're going to have to do something. He may hurt himself permanently. Just work on it, yeah. Great. I thought you said this guy was another for the stand. He's going to be fine, and if he's not, we'll get someone else. Good going, Dickie. One phone call, that's all. All right, run this up once more. Right, Here we go. Light it up, light it up. And roll your cameras, and slate it. You ready? Are you ready, Mr. Preston? Yeah. Okay, and <clears throat> Mr. Dazzle Commercial, take three. And action! your toilable cares away. So good, I'll dance your toilable cares away. It's your bathroom, so don't spoil it. That's the reason that I am here. Mr. Dazzle in your toilet. Guarantees a bowl of good cheer. Call Mr. Dazzle. So good, you'll blush. Yes, I know you flush with pride. <laughs> On Senator Pine, just a buck twenty nine. will be a place friends come to see. Senator Pine, just a buck twenty-nine. <laughs> Your toilet will be a place friends come to see. It gets worse every time. No, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, you look good. Not that bad. No, it was sort of nice, Dick. I mean, at least you did a lot of singing and dancing. <laughs> the music worked well. Oh, thanks, Dennis. You know, I'll never be able to shake this thing. I could be president of the United States. I'm still going to be known as a guy that danced on the toilet. It's going to haunt me. No, no, no. A lot of important people are doing commercials these days. Orson Welles, Henry Fonda, Patricia Neal, Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, in living rooms, dance, nice kitchen. Not in toilets. Hello. Hi, Tony. I saw it. I saw it twice. Boy, don't tell me they're going to keep running that thing. They're not. Well, good. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, okay, bye. What happened, Dick? Well, the agency didn't like the commercials, and they're going to change the whole concept of it, but they didn't like my dancing. 
I mean, I thought that's the one thing I did right was the dancing. You know what it was? It was that costume. It was that dumb costume. It wasn't right for a toilet commercial. I should have had something like a plumber's outfit. That's what I should have had. With a, see, a bowl brush instead of the cane, and the girls could have been dressed like plungers. And we could have done it right inside of the toilet. Yeah, you am going brush, 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 brush. No more frightful frenzy frazzle. Brush, brush, listen carefully. As we say, brush, brush, buy a can of Mr. Dazzle. Brush, brush. <laughs> See? They don't know. They got no taste. 